Hey, this is Mike Ambassador Bruni, and welcome to another episode of the New Art of Conference Networking Hashtags to Handshakes show, where we say long after the conference has concluded, it's the connections that continue. Our guest today is none other than Joe Polizzi, who is the founder of Content Marketing Institute. You're really going to enjoy this interview. I had a chance to meet Joe in person, great spirit, and we also share some, some musical interest together, and that comes up in the interview. Um, I'll link up all kinds of stuff in the show notes later on, but enjoy the show, and I will see you afterwards. Peace. As I mentioned, today's special guest is Joe Polizzi from Content Marketing World. We're very excited to have him. Joe, I don't know if you know, but I have my special orange um, pocket square here in your honor. You, you get extra points for that, Mike. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I know you're a busy man, and you have a great conference that's about to, to take place. And I had a couple of questions. Most of these questions are user-generated. The first one is, what sparked you know, the idea for even having this conference in the first place? God, that's a great question. You know, we started the conference in 2011, and the initial idea was, look, there, there's no real event out there for marketers to really get together, to network, to learn together. So we should, I said, well, somebody's got to do it. And if it's not us, I'll be upset if somebody else does it. So we better, we better do it and put it together. We actually plan to have it in Cleveland, Ohio. And I said, you know, we, we res- reserved a room that would fit between 150 and 200. Mm-hmm. And we said, here we go. Let's open it up for registration. And we knew very quickly we were, we were going to surpass that number. And we actually hit over 600 in the first year. Oh, wow. And we're like, boy, we're on to something. So it's just funny. You know, we had an idea. I knew that there was a need out there, but yeah. I didn't know it would go quite that extent. And then last year we got over a thousand in Columbus. And then this year, boy, I don't know what the numbers are going to look like. It's going to be well over 1,200 this year in Cleveland. So we're, we're headed in the right direction. But I think it's just, you know, listening. I listen to enough people out there. All I do is go out there and talk to people about their content marketing challenges and meet with companies. Yep. Just saw enough of a need. And really, a lot of people saying, Joe, I want to meet people like me. Mm-hmm. Like, who's doing my job at other locations? And I said, well, maybe we can help with that. And then I think content marketing world, that's one of those pain points that we solve is just networking and those people getting to meet with other people. Excellent. Excellent. So what makes content marketing world different? You know, there are other, there are other conferences that are, or at least now, there are other conferences that are focused on conference marketing. What makes it different? Boy, it's funny. In just the last year, uh, the amount of content marketing conferences out there have just ballooned, which is good. Uh, you know, rising, rising uh, uh, boat, rising tide lifts all boats, right? That's right, what JFK right. said. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. Um, when we start, I mean, Mike, you and I know you go to a lot of conferences. I go to a lot of conferences. I probably will end up going to thirty or forty different conferences this year. Mm-hmm. And just to be honest, most of them are horribly boring. And it's hard to even sit through. Um, so when we started this thing, I said, first thing, in order for people to learn, I believe they have to first be having fun. They have to open themselves up to new ideas. Because this content marketing thing is not easy. A lot of people think it's easy. A lot, most people don't even know really what it is. So you really have to open up your mind to thinking differently about marketing and communicating with customers. And to do that, you better have a little bit of fun. you got to let down your guard. So we do always do a nice, fun opening. Uh, we, I tell people in the opening segment, look, you're here. To ha- I want you to have as much fun as ever. That's why we do like opening reception at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's why we'll, like this year we're doing Mega 80s Night um, where everybody gets to dress up in their 80s clothes. And two years ago we had Kevin Smith, you know, Silent Bob, come in, and he did a great uh, comedy act. And, I mean, we're all about having a lot of fun. Of course, we just announced... William Shatner is our closing keynote, so that'll be, you know, the captain will be there himself uh, doing his thing for closing. So we really want want to surround it with a lot of fun, and if we believe they do that, or we can do that, then they'll open themselves up for hardcore education. And and from an education standpoint, I want to make sure that every session they sit through, they get something significant out of. So, So I actually, personally, myself, that's my job. I work with all the speakers I pan, we pick the speakers and I work with them and make sure that what they're doing here they don't they haven't done anywhere else it's something different and really there's some amazing takeaways and I say you know cut out all the here's you know here's five minutes about me cut out the sales pitch 
get me right to the content because That's we got to help these people. We right. don't have a long time with these people. We got two and a half days. We've got to make a solid impact. So all about fun and all about content that's really going to make a difference in their lives or in their jobs. That's great, Joe. I, I, I love the way, you know, I'm hearing, hey, have fun and get educated. And um, I think you and I, you and I have had some discussions around music. And, and the thing that it's going in the back of my head is how uh, some people leverage music uh, a lot of times with youth as a way of, of learning. And, and part of that's probably the, the fun aspect. So I'm glad that you're you're so focused on that. And I love the energy that you're bringing to it. Listen, we don't have a lot of time. We got we got to have fun. We got to we got to help to educate the people. Bring well, what just. They need. Well, on that, Mike, the music thing, I mean, I, so we, you know, for at least the first two years, I picked the tracks. Everybody that came out on stage, I picked the tracks for them. I, it was a little bit different. All the, the music during breaks, I picked the tracks for that. I mean, I came out first year and I said, you could be anywhere in the world, but, I'm, but you're here with me. This is from Jay Z, right? You got yeah. that right in your background. <laughs> but you're here with me, and I appreciate that. I said that on stage. You could be anywhere in the world, but. I mean, and that's true. This their time is so valuable. They're spending time and resources to be there. We better make it a party. And by the end of the the time with us, they better make sure they go back to their workplaces and can make immediate impact. And if they don't, then we failed. Mm. So speaking of workplace, who who are the people who will benefit most from attending Content Marketing World? We. We are, this is not, I mean, let me get, let me get, this is a, this is a really important question. I would love to see the chief marketing officer of Fortune 50 companies come in because I'd love to say that they attended, but this is probably not for them. It's for their team. Mm -hmm. This is for people that are in the trenches, uh, in marketing, PR, social media that are either responsible or trying to integrate owned content in the organization that could be own stories that are that we're sharing on social it could be white papers it could be videos um it could be a new form of public relations it could be influencer programs all those and you're you know oh my gosh i got this content thing and how do i make it work because even though content marketing has been around for 100 years, content marketing is a muscle that has atrophied in most organizations. Mm. We had it once when we started. I mean, if, unless you're, if you're an older company, you started off selling through storytelling by connecting with your audience in one way, by telling some sort of story that was going to help them out with their pain points. And that's how you built a relationship. And then this thing called mass media came around and we changed all together on how we marketed. We started... Uh, thinking differently about the way we communicated. And now, because consumers are in control, we've got to go back to storytelling. And storytelling is not easy. You've got to want it. You've got to really want it in the organization, and you've got a structure for it, and there's a process behind it. So I would say anybody that works with content in any way or basically are just in marketing mm -hmm. in any size company, but we tend to go for larger companies, so mid-market or higher. So if you are a small, small business listening to this, we have a small business summit on September 12th. That'd be perfect for you. It's the day after the big show. But if you, are, if you, if you, have, a, if you have multiple people in your marketing program, then Content Marketing World's for you. If you're a one-person show, I would go to the small business summit because you get Brian Clark from Copy Bloggers running that for me. Fantastic guy. Um, that was, that's specifically for small business. But if you're a doer, if you're responsible for getting it done, great. And if you are not a doer, doer if, you're for, if you set the overall strategy for the organization, you need to have your team attend. Excellent. Thank you for, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so now, the conference is over. What do you want me to feel, do, think as a result of attending Content Marketing World? Well, hopefully you just saw William Shatner speak and you are filled with... <laughs> <laughs> you, you've boldly, boldly gone where no one has gone before, right? Or you feel something. Um, I want you to be inspired. I really, and, and I think that if you come out of a conference inspired, that's important because I've been to so many conferences where I've been let down. I'm like, oh, man, I spent my time and energy and I just didn't feel it, didn't, didn't, didn't bring it. So that's, first of all, inspired because if you're inspired, then you're going to take that checklist and hopefully go back to it and do something with it. Right. And let's be realistic. You're probably going to get more things at the conference than you're going to know what to do with. But if you can take two or three of those things and execute them over the next six, nine, 12 months, then I think we've succeeded. So that's why the whole conference is focused on how to. Because, I mean, yeah, there are some theories, but even in the, 
um, even in the tracks and the sessions that are theory based, there's always a how to component. That's how we structure. That's even on our content on our website. There's always a how to component uh, because time is short. Right. We don't have we don't have time. We, we're not we're not going to our master's class here where we've got two, three, four years to learn this stuff. Right. We've got to execute it fairly quickly. So get a, an understanding for where we're at in our content marketing life cycle and then ram it home as fast as we can and do something with it. So I want you to be inspired. I want you to feel like you've been affected positively in some way. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I want you to take two or three things and execute them. And if you need help, you have now have a community around you that you can ask questions and people will help you because they're going through the same thing that you're going through. Excellent. Now, you must have known what my next question was because you finished off right into community. And then the next question was, uh, with the work that I do, the new art of conference networking, hashtags and handshakes, you know, one of the, my philosophy is long after the conference is concluded, it's the, it's the connections that continue. How or what are some of the things that you've put in place to help people connect uh, and build community during your conference? Boy, is it so important. I think that originally when we started the event, I'm thinking of it less as networking and more as, um, boy, really having them get something out of it from a how-to standpoint. But, you know, they go hand in hand. Networking is so critical today. And a lot of people come specifically to meet people that are doing the same thing. They're, they're walking the same path. Uh, so from that standpoint, we start early. Like we've started six months ago. We started on the mobile app. People are already talking and connecting. It's sort of a clo and that's, it's sort of a closed environment. So basically, it's everyone that's going to be at the event are already sharing stuff on the mobile app. So if you're going, you connect quickly on the mobile app. You can start talking. And what I love about that is. You already have connected with people by the time you get there. Definitely. Last year when we did this, they are, people already had coffee meetings set up. They were supposed to meet in certain places. So people, because uh, you can share your interests on there and what you're looking for and what you're trying to get out of it so you can already connect with people from that standpoint. I'm surprised. The hashtag, CM World hashtag, it's amazing. People are connecting on there. I see it probably six times a day. Hey, are you going? Hey, let's meet up. <laughs> They're already talking on Twitter about it, so that's fantastic. And then once you get to the event, the first year I made the mistake of packing in too much education and not enough networking time. Mm -hmm. So what we've done this time, if I, I have longer breaks in between sessions, so we've got the longer breaks. That's fantastic. I've got uh, more, even more, if that's possible, even more nightlife opportunities yep. where people have time to either go to dinner if they want to go to dinner. If you're by yourself and you don't know anybody, that's fine because we've got like you go out to House of Blues. There'll be a lot of people by themselves. You can meet up there. Excellent. You can go party, do mega 80 stuff. There'll be post parties. There'll be lots of places in comfortable environments where people can connect with each other. And then we've got the tracks. I think the tracks are really important because if you're interested in content strategy right. or your focus is social media, you will start sitting next to and seeing the same people over and over again. And you can sort of build a community within a community from that standpoint. That's an excellent point. And you know, when you, when you said track, the first thing that came to my mind was music. I was like, oh, I wonder if he's selling this thing. That may be, or a giveaway. That may be a, another opportunity there if it's not already out there for the people because it sounds like you're really involved in the music. Um, and it may be, actually, there's a whole nostalgia piece, you know, what was playing when, uh, what was going on when this music was playing. So, Well, I'll sure. tell you what, last year we had, uh, which was uh, surprising to me how successful Rick Springfield was. So Rick Springfield performed last year. Yes. I had, and I thought it was a great choice, but I didn't know how good a choice it was going to be. Mm -hmm. The people that came together because of their love of Rick Springfield that, that now are like best friends and they all talked. To, I mean, it's weird, right? Now, the same thing is happening this year. People are talking about the 80s and what they were doing in the 80s because that's right. our core demographic grew up in the 80s. Right. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting to see that and that, that bonding over not just work stuff, but personal stuff makes that bond go that much deeper. Right, right. So now, you said you started 2011, correct? With the event, yes. With the event. Yes. Okay, so now, how do you keep it fresh from year to year? I, I have someone who sent me a question who's like, you know, so you go to some of these conferences, you, can, you, you should only go once because the next year, you know, it's like it's, it's refried oh. beans, <laughs> as they put it. So I'm curious, how do you keep things fresh from year to year? Uh, well, one thing is with the speakers – what we what we do is every every speaker is analyzed. If they don't score at least a four, from so basically four out of five as a score from the year before, they don't get asked back, and we tell them that. 
So if you don't score really well, you will not come back, even if you are a paid sponsor. Mm -hmm. So that's really important that we need the best of the best. We need to make sure that, that the... Uh, that the users, that the attendees really appreciated those people spending their time. So that's the, the other thing is we do have our core people like the Ann Hanleys of the world, like the Jay Bears of the yes. world, the Lee Odins of the world. Those people I love. I'll have them back every year because they're fantastic. But we always want new people like a Carlos Hildago's new this year. Going to be fantastic. We've got brands from Cisco Systems and Hershey's and Four Seasons and REI and Coca-Cola. Jonathan Mildenhall's new this year. A lot of new people that are coming into the mix that we haven't had before with new takes on content marketing. Mm -hmm. this, the, this, and honestly, Mike, for us, it's easy because it has evolved. The practice of content marketing has evolved so much in the last year. Yeah. We're not talking about any of the stuff we talked about last yeah, yeah. year talking a lot about integration. We're talking a lot heavy duty about strategy as it pertains to overall marketing strategy. So two years ago, you know, we were, ho we were hoping that somebody in the back of a dark room could pick up content marketing and do it and hopefully go stealth. Mm -hmm. Well, today, content marketing is one of the core um, priorities for most marketing departments. Yeah. So it has r risen in the organization and that creates a whole new set of political issues. So we've got to deal with that as well. So we're, we're talking about, you know, how do we deal with legal? Uh, how, how do we uh, organize that with PR? Who really runs marketing? Who should or who should run content marketing? Right. Um, I mean, everybody sort of is in charge of content in the organization, right, in their own way. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with that in social? I mean, we could go on and on forever. You and I could go back and right. forth. Um, if we didn't go stale the first year. It was pretty easy not to. I think the the next year, and then adding you know adding cool keynotes like a William Shatner, right. like a Jonathan Mildenhall. Uh, we've got some uh, Joanne Serino from University of North Carolina is going to be sharing some research that hasn't been shared before. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be sharing our uh, Content Marketing Institute Marketing Profs Content Marketing Research for 2014 that hasn't been shared before. Right. Lots of new stuff that people won't get anywhere else, and then plus. They'll be with a thousand of their very best friends sitting right next to them. So we're <laughs> we're we're looking forward to that. I, if you, man, I'll tell you what. If somebody came out of this thinking it was stale, I I would be so shocked. Um, there will be a session or two that may not jive with you, but overall, I mean, we in, in all my so in the full first two years, we've asked everybody, do you would you come back and refer your friends to this? Yes. So of the two thousand people that have completed it. Only one person said they, they wouldn't come back, and I had a long, stern talk with that person. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got a 99% approval rate rating, and I'd like to keep that. And we oh, work hard great. to do that. That is great. Um, uh, now, this is a little bit of a twist of a question uh, that moves to a different side, but it's something that's come up to me from the audiences, and I ask it at, at, um, during all the interviews that I have. And that question is, hey, how do I become a speaker for one of your workshops in, in, in the years? So that, that's a question on the table there. It's a great question. We take, uh, as soon as Content Marketing World 2013 is done, we start for 14. Uh, we start taking submissions about 30 days afterwards, and we close down submissions December 1st. So we're right within that timetable. I'd start thinking about it now if that's something you want to do. And I'll be honest with you, if you don't have a vi if I've never seen you like Mike, you and I have talked before. Yes. I already know that you're a good presenter. I have confidence in that. If you presented something to me, I don't have to see your video. I already know how you present. Uh, if, if I haven't seen you present before, you better submit a video yeah. with it because if you don't have a video, we won't even, we won't even look at it Excellent. because I've got nothing to go on. Everyone that, has, that will speak at Content Marketing World 2013, I've either seen them in person or I've seen a video of them. So most people that submit, they don't understand that power. I need to have that proof. Yes. So that's really important. Uh, something unique, not the same old five things to do here and there. I mean, I've seen we see those every time. It's right. almost like I used to teach public speaking at, at Penn State. I've probably seen 30 legalizing marijuana speeches. Everybody's like, <laughs> everybody wanted to do legalizing marijuana. It's like, let's do something original. Do something where you can be the leading expert in the world at it. And then the final thing is you've got to have you probably have to have a hopping blog or write a book. 
Excellent. Um, Michael Stelsner, good friend of mine who runs Social Media Examiner, he, he, for his online conferences, he basically says, hey, if you're not a practitioner and you don't work for, a, if you work for either a big brand or you have to have a book, I probably won't accept you as a speaker because we have to have a draw. You have to be a draw Excellent. for us to get more attendees there. So, but, you know, really the most important thing is compelling content and a video. So if you don't have a video right now, do whatever you can to have somebody record. Like if you're speaking at an event, ask for permission that you can videotape that, cut that up. It will be the best one minute, one thirty minute, one one minute thirty seconds of video that you could possibly produce. Excellent. You will get so much mileage out of that. Excellent. The, so the video is definitely something that's been a, a popular response uh, when, when I asked that question. Last question, Joe. How can the people get in touch with you? How can they learn more about Content Marketing World? Oh uh, well, that's easy. We're hopefully we're everywhere. Hopefully, we're pretty easy to find. Contentmarketingworld.com uh, is the place to go for all our. I think we've got over a hundred speakers there right now. You'll see them all listed. You'll, the full agendas out there. Me, I'm pretty easy. Uh, I'm on. I'm at Joe Polizzi on Twitter. Uh, I'm JoePolizzi.com. My new book, Epic Content Marketing, we're going to launch that at the show. Uh, so we're you know you, I'm really really easy to find. So just type in Joe Polizzi. Into uh, into Google, and you will be able to reach me in a hundred different places. I'm completely open, and if you res and if you send out a note, uh, it may take me a day or two, but I always do respond. It just sometimes takes me a while uh, to get there these days, but I always want to be responsive, and uh, and I think that's important part of my role as uh, is sort of the poster boy here for content marketing, or at least I like I like to think so, and <laughs> need to do my job to wear orange, carry the banner for content marketing, and. Keep getting people believing in the power of telling your own stories. Excellent, excellent. Well, Joe, you know, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. So I want to thank you. So I want to I thank it, you. Mike. I want to thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, looking forward to catching up. Yes, have a great rest of the day. Thank you.